Hello, everybody. Welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode, I'm continuing talking about the Blackmagic uh, Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Uh, the 4K specifically because it's got a micro four thirds uh, sensor, which is a little bit smaller than uh, if you get a Super 35 sensor, which is the um, w which is the type of sensor you get if you purchase the the, the Pro the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera Pro model. Anyway, but this uh, with with the smaller sensor w and, and with the micro four thirds mount, what I've got here is I've got some uh, vintage. Uh, lenses that we've purchased uh, that are these nice little Nikon ones. Uh, these are these are little photography lenses, and it's got Zeiss glass in it. It's really, really these are re it's really really nice glass. Uh, this is a 50 millimeter focal length here. Nice thing about this lens also is it's a fairly fast lens. This lens is 1.4, so it opens up quite a bit, lets a lot of light in. Or, or this is built for uh, old film camera, an old uh, film th uh, 35 millimeter film camera still photography camera, uh, but it works great on these things. And it's got a really, since this is ice glass, it's got a really nice clarity to it still, but it still offers kind of like a really nice kind of soft uh, look to it as well, where it looks kind of a little bit of a vintage look. Anyway, yeah, really, really beautiful lens here and fairly affordable. You can get these on eBay sometimes around like $300 each. Uh, brand new, you can still get these for about like, uh, th these are called, let me give you the full name here. This is uh, Carl, Zar Carl Zeiss. Uh, planar 1.4 50 millimeter ZF.2. Uh, so this is, uh, and, and these are the, and these are Nikon, these are Nikon mount here. So the issue is I've got a micro four thirds lens uh, mount on here. And keep in mind that this was the, with uh, shooting in 35 millimeter film, the image plane for that is, is about uh, three to four times the size of the micro four thirds. Therefore, you got that big circle of light that's hitting that small, that's hitting that. Uh, small image sensor, and therefore the little teeny square inside that big circle is just getting a portion of the of the of the image that it should get. It will look like it's cropped or zoomed in. Uh, so we, we don't want to do that. Right now I've got the DZO uh, Micro Four Thirds uh, zoom lens on this. I'm going to take that off, and I'm going to show you something we've got here uh, to adapt this. This here is a Micro Four. And Metabones makes a whole bunch of these types of mounts. Uh, that will uh, uh, adapt your uh, lens lens type to fit a different type of uh, lens mount. Uh, this here is a micro four thirds mount that we're using on the camera. So what I've got here is I've got a, uh, this is a Nikon to MFT mount. Uh, that, so this does two things. It's an adapter, so it adapts that ring. But this also, what this is called is it's called a speed booster. The Metabone speed booster with the with the Nikon to Micro Four Thirds uh, mount, the MFT mount here, adapter. So it's got the adapter, but you'll notice it's got this little magnifying glass that's like right in the middle of it here. Uh, and what that magnifying glass basically does is it basically takes, uh, it takes that large amount of light that hits that whole uh, image there and, and shrinks it down to a smaller size here. So it's basically taking that big circle of light and crushing it down to a small circle of light so you don't get that crap factor. And what that also do, if you think about it, it takes all that light that's hitting this, say a surface area like this, and it's concentrating it. Imagine like uh, you hear about kids when they take magnifying glasses and, and burn things. They like put it in front of the sun and they put it on a piece of wood and it starts burning things. Uh, that's basically what this is doing is taking all that light and pushing, putting it down to a smaller. It doesn't do it small enough to like burn into your camera, but uh, it takes all that light and moves it down uh, to a smaller beam of light. Uh, so you're getting, so it's not cropping the image. And also all that light is now doing this in that smaller area. And that's why they call it a speed booster because it is giving you more exposure. It's giving a lot more exposure to your image sensor. So this is actually great if you want to use it in low light. It even has a little ring on the top if you don't want to use uh, that extra amount of light coming in and treat it like it's a regular uh, lens where you you're using your f-stop or t-stop to change the amount of light coming into the camera. So uh, with that being explained, I'm going to take off uh, the DZO lens here. Slide out the follow focus here. At least the slice, slide that out. I'm not using the map box right now. These lenses are also light enough that you do not need to use uh, any sort of lens support for them. So I'm going to take that lens off there. And I'm going to take the speed booster and I'm going to put that onto the camera. And with the speed booster, you've got this little white dot right there. And then you're going to line that up with the red dot on the on the um, lens mount. And then you rotate it till it clicks. And now I've got the speed booster installed. Pretty easy. So now I'm going to take the Nikon. Nikons are backwards. They don't go. If you're looking at the if you're looking at the camera, they don't righty tighty to click into place. They lefty tighty. They instead of lefty loosey, they lefty tighty. 
and righty Lucy. So it's the opposite with Nikon lenses. So, and on the meta bones, you've got a little red dot right back here. It's kind of hard to see, but it's right there. Just look for it. And actually with the Nikon, the Nikons uh, line up with the F-stop uh, or the, the F-stop or T-stop uh, line right there. So I'm going to line those two up, the red dot, and of course, make sure it's flush. And then lefty Lucy, until it tightens and clicks. I got that tightened in place. Another thing that I've got on this lens right here that I bought, uh, these are really, really cheap and they're very useful. The Nikon lenses, I like them because when it comes to one end of the lens, it stops. It's not like a Canon lens. So Canon lens. So these work really, really well as cinema lenses because it rotates till it hits the other end and then it stops. But what I've got here is this adapter ring. I cannot remember the size of this, the the millimeter uh, diameter of this whole lens here is different than the than the thread size. But uh, these tiltus seamless rings is what these are called. You just have to buy, uh, you can kind of guess the, the millimeters, but these are like two bucks each. So what I usually do is I just buy, uh, I just go into like bnh.com uh, and I buy just all the different, all the ring sizes that they have. Then I have them if I ever need to use them on a different lens. They're like two bucks each uh, on B&H. So yeah, I just bought a whole bunch of these and then, then you, you want them kind of snug, but not where you have to super stretch them and pull them around that focus ring. Otherwise it tightens down on the focus ring and it's hard to turn the focus ring. So this, these things, you get them up to where they just barely uh, get the right size that barely pressurizes on the lens. The tilt is seamless ring there. And now you can put this follow focus on here if you want to. Uh, I'm not going to install the matte box. I'm just install, just showing you the, these lenses here today. Tighten that up and now we got a nice little follow focus ring uh, attached to our cinema lens there. So. So the other type of lens here is I've got three of these lenses here that I bought. Uh, honestly, just about these on eBay. Actually, one of them I bought brand new for around like 500 bucks, the 50 millimeter. But this is a 25 millimeter. Bought this for about 300 bucks online. This one's not as fast. This one's a 2.8. Uh, so not as fast as the 50 millimeter lens, but that's a bit wider. So you get your 25 millimeter uh, lens there. And then I've got this nice uh, 85 millimeter, which is also very fast, very heavy glass as well. 1.4 as well and now on an 85 millimeter. And uh, just those three lenses alone there are enough to basically shoot a, shoot a full-on movie if you wanted to. They've got, uh, the, once again, they've got really nice glass. It's got Zeiss glass. It's incredible. You get the, and the, the glass that they put in these photo um, in these photo lenses is the exact same glass that they put in their cinema lenses. So it's the exact same glass, exact same quality. It's really, really nice uh, quality, good vintage quality. Still uh, very crisp looking without being overly crisp. Sometimes when you get the photography lenses, uh, like the new Sony ones, the Sony G master lenses. Oh, uh, those are really built for a huge megapixel count when you're doing still images. Um, and when you shoot them on video, they tend to look really, really crisp, like overly crisp. Uh, so, and sometimes people will put like a, a pro mist filter in front of those lenses just to soften it up a little bit and not give it, uh, and the pro mist filters, they kind of kill the, the, the super fine, uh, fine lines of, of those of those lenses, how crisp they are, without making them look like they're out of focus, without making them look soft. So especially if you get a really nice uh, um, pro mist filter. Uh, anyway, so yeah, with uh, so now with that adapter there, once again we're not cropping. Uh, we've got we've got the maximum amount of light, and you do have this little thing on top. Let's see what this does here. So on the top here of this lens, right right here on the meta bones, you got this little slider here that goes from seven down to one and then to f. Um, if you're on F, that is fully speed, speed boosted right there. And if you want to uh, get rid of that effect, you turn it all the way down to seven. And then the seven gives you basically, uh, the same amount of bright or, or will, will adjust the brightness level as you, uh, change your aperture here. As you change your aperture, you'll see it going up and down, but let's see what happens here. Let me turn this around and show you the screen. Right now I'm on seven and I'm going to grab my iris and move my iris and you can see the irising up and down. I'm going to move this and keep this on like F11 right there. So we're not getting a ton of light coming in. But now watch what happens as I slide this ring from seven and start sliding it toward the F. We're getting that speed boost effect. And look at that. Look how many more stops of light we have coming into that. It's just it's taking advantage of that big, uh, that, that big circle of light coming in. Uh, and onto your sensor and being having it flattened down and concentrated on a small area is taking advantage of that and it's giving you more light. So you have, if you're in low light, this does a great job in low light. Uh, so if we boost it, take that booster back down to seven, now we have full ring control here on our iris. So yeah, keep in mind, yeah, look at this F16 and look how much light we have coming in on F16, which is crazy. So uh, anyway, and you do, and it does retain that depth of field, that wide depth of field that you get with a smaller uh, iris, which is really, really nice. So anyway, uh, so that's the meta that, so that's the Metabones uh, speed booster slash adapter. Um, 
works really well for finding these older lenses or if they do have uh, Canon e, uh, EF lenses to MFT and they have uh, Sony, then, then they have Sony to MFT as well. Uh, so they, yeah, they're a little bit pricey around like four to 500 bucks for the, the speed boost, but very well worth it, especially if you're gonna be using uh, different lenses uh, to shoot your movies. So anyway, uh, and then yeah, and then you get kind of that vintage look. Anyway, well, thanks for watching. Uh, I do have one more episode I'm going to be doing on how to do the menu setup inside uh, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. So, um, so if you have any questions or comments, let me know.